Just like the third time, time. Just like the third time, time. Good evening and welcome to Wavelength. I'm your host, Ian Butler. This is a show where we talk to local people in the hope of getting everybody a little bit more on the same wavelength. Now today is going to be a very meta show because we're, here we are on PCT and we're going to be talking about PCT with PCT's newer board member, uh, a woman by the name of Cheryl Amateur. Welcome to the show, Hi, Cheryl. Hey, I'm really happy to be here, Ian. Yeah, I understand that you've been working with the station and things for a while, but this is your first time actually being on a show like this. This is my first time that I'm not auctioning something mm -hmm. or raffling something, <laughs> so I just get to be me. Well, that's great. Well, so I, I was uh, looking for somebody to talk about uh, what's going on with PCT right now. With uh, we, we, we've got a some, lot, a lot going on. A lot. And I was told, oh, you got to talk to Cheryl. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, here we are. I'm new, but I'm in it up to here. Yeah, apparently. So uh, yeah, I came on board at a really interesting time. It was right before the pandemic, and um, had a few meetings here mm -hmm. on property, and then suddenly it was all by Zoom, which nobody had ever heard of, but um, that's the first thing I'm going to say about PCT. They figure it out yeah, and they absolutely. make it work. So how is it that you found yourself involved in this? What, what, what brought you on board? Community. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's in the name, Community Television. Yeah. So in 2016, I had a booth at Fogfest, you know, Pacifica's big mm -hmm. festival of the year. And an intern came by my booth and said, could you make a donation to PCT? And I went, what is a PCT? <laughs> and they did their job. They were trained well. And they told me it was a community media station. And my ears perked up because I have a history with television. And in Dallas, in the early 80s, I was one of the pioneer actor slash almost comedians that we did our version of like Saturday Night Live in Dallas called k -Laugh TV. Oh, really? And um, was in with a group that we wrote original little things like um, The Life in a Day of Two Friends and The Linda and Cheryl Show, which was my take on my friend and I trying to be actresses in Dallas. So anyway, I was really interested and I said, I'd love to donate. Do I need to do it now? And they went, no, we have a telethon coming up. We'll be in touch. And a well-trained intern called me to say, yes, we would like to get your items. So I was going to donate some sea glass jewelry and a couple copies of a book I'd written. OK, so we'll get back to the fact we'll uh, you have sea that. glass jewelry and a book to talk yeah. about. But yes, more on that later. Yes. So I brought my things in one day here at the station to turn them over and general manager Man About Town, Marty Anaya, mm -hmm. was in the front lobby with some amazing young interns, which is one thing that just happens like magic here. Yeah. And he was training them, and he was motivating them for the upcom upcoming telethon. And I come in the door, like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, this is what I do in this book. And he looked around, and he said, OK, everyone, look, we have someone here who's not afraid to talk. And we could do something to promote the telethon. Anybody have any ideas? And one really, really good intern said, well, she does sea glass. We could take her across the highway, and she can find sea glass. And I was like, you're speaking my language. <laughs> so That's great. Yeah, you got they brought to a the camera. And... We went over there. I found sea glass. Of course, mm -hmm. the audio was awful because the wind was blowing mm -hmm. 40 knots or whatever. Yeah. And we came back, and she said, do you think you could do a voiceover to go with what we just shot? And I was like, that was my career in Dallas. I was primarily a voiceover person. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and stream of consciousness narrated. They put together when I saw it, I was stunned. It was beautiful. It was it's a amazing great, what they can do here. Yeah. Yeah, it promoted me and Sea Glass, but it also promoted the auction and I was so impressed. So that when I got a phone call not that long after that, Marty said, um, you know what? I think I need you to be an auctioneer. 
And I was like, well, it just so happens I married a man that worked for PBS, KERA in Dallas, and they just owned me for auction and telethons and everything that went on there. So I was like, yeah, I can do that in my sleep. <laughs> so I started doing that, and after a couple years, they were so wonderful and honoring me for being a business person that worked with them and part of the community. And Marty asked me if I would consider joining the board. Which, that was fast. Yeah, it was. You, it was. You and just like walk in the door, yeah, doing just a C couple random things, and Put then me on your board. Within like what was it? Within a year or so, it's like. Yeah, well, no, board. I actually probably did. So, 2016. I think I joined the board toward the end of 2018. Should have looked oh, that oh, up before oh, okay. I came, but oh, yeah, it's it was either yeah, early right. 2019. So, yeah, I'm newish, but mm. it is because of the pandemic that we're in like this time warp of everything, you know, went at a different speed. And do you have yeah. a hard time remembering? <laughs> it was a couple of years. Like that, yeah. when things are Blur, that yeah. happened before or during or after, you'd think that would be like a stake in the ground, but it's like haze. And it just, so yeah. I, I, you know, when I talked to Marty, I was like, well, I'm not sure what I can do. For PCT, well, he figured it out. A lot, it turns out. He, yeah, he figured it out. First of all, you know, very quickly they made me secretary, and I had to keep the minutes, which on Zoom is really fun. That's, because, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, I've always you have to avoided being the secretary, but you you went well, because there. I am making <laughs> a a document that you know PCT public educational government. Peg, peg. That's, that's a key of term peg, here. Yes. which is the peg that PCT is built on. That's what we do. We, you we, have we, to yeah. get it right. So you know the board is holding a trust for community and government because of the way the funding comes through, and you just want to make sure that you do the right thing. So very quickly on, we were hit with a pandemic. And that's when I saw PCT step forward and we had a meeting and it was like, what are we going to do? How do we help? So public wise, we will have a bulletin board. We will share information. Mm -hmm. Marty was always saying, does anybody have anything new that they've learned? Because do you remember the days when we didn't know how you caught it? And sure, we, we thought it, that it was by yeah, we surfaces like mostly. Yeah, we were like baking our mail. <laughs> yeah, we didn't know. Right, yeah, exactly. What do you do with your mail? Yeah, you spray it with something? Or, yeah, yeah, and we didn't know <clears> how it worked. Put in quarantine for yeah. a few days. <laughs> so we would try to keep updated and then pass that information on to the public. And then government, that other part of our peg, mm -hmm. they had to have meetings. They, they are required to have meetings. They, they can't are have them in person anymore. Yeah to communicate with the people they serve. And again, nobody knew how Zoom worked and you know how to make these things work. And I watched it happen in real time. These guys that are behind <laughs> the cameras right yeah. now yeah. and that are in this building, they worked so hard and were so dedicated to figure it out and make sure that Half Moon Bay and Pacifica and San Mateo County and the school boards Everybody could have their meetings, keep informed, keep moving as much as we could, and you know, find our way through. And as often happens, those are growing pains. And now we find PCT in command of a skill set that wasn't there before. That's true. Yeah, you, you can do the remote meetings now. You don't have to be there. Well, we're on our way to being truly, truly remote. We're mm -hmm. not there yet. But they never stop looking for the best path forward, and they never stop relating it back to the community. We even did a survey during COVID of businesses in Pacifica. Are you open? When and how can people get service from you or goods from you? Do you need anything? 
that we can let the public know you have a certain need? Or do you have, like one business said, we have a lot of hand sanitizer. And there were oh, times yeah. when that was liquid gold. Yeah, yeah. I so, understand that the, uh, the local um, distillery, yes. they had, uh, I guess when they're, when they're making their first batch of, of uh, alcohol, it's not drinkable. So like, hey, we can use this for hand sanitizer. We were getting that around. That's what you do in those and it times. smelled like whiskey. It was great. <laughs> 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 or something. It's more like alcohol. <laughs> well, that's a good smell when yeah. you're dealing with things that you don't understand that are going to make you sick. So, yeah, it's just been an amazing journey. Yeah, so, okay, so we had, had that. Um, so you get in here, and suddenly we have COVID, and everything changes. Mm -hmm. But another thing then happens not long after you get on the board, and that is that we've had had to um, buy the place that we're sitting in here right now, right? So that's that was a that huge. That was breathtaking. <clears throat> and that's kind of, I think, the main. That was overwhelming, That's Ian. the main <laughs> reason that I wanted to do a show about yeah. PCT because I'm not even sure how we did it. And, and uh, it seems like it's it's working, but I, I, we're not completely out of the woods No, we're yet. not out of the woods. We're not. Yeah. Uh, we <clears> need so, the community and so, we need the government and we need the educational to you know hand in hand with us on this yeah so the the nutshell on that mm -hmm. was that this business center that we're sitting in tonight belonged to a family and the man wanted it was toward the end of his life and his children did not want to continue so we kind of got a little bit of a rumble that it oh, was going to go for sale right the next and thing, it had been a really sweet deal oh right, for yeah all these years. our rent was incredibly fair, mm -hmm. <laughs> overly reasonable and static. Mm -hmm. But you know, that, that was the first pit of the stomach because one thing I can tell you being on the inside of PCT is there is a very concise budget. Mm -hmm. Our resources are managed, micromanaged. We have a small staff. It looks like Everything's bigger than it is because they do such a good job. And so much of it is done by volunteers. And it's that's the majority of yes. it, what's happening is volunteers or, or um, students, and you know. So, but there are a couple of people that get paid. There are. There yeah. are a few staff members. But not much. So, so it was the the two choices we had: you move, or you buy it. And the people. The other night, I think I, I said their name wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Vertical Ventures was okay. the group that bought the business center and converted it to business condominiums, which basically meant they did a little bit of rehab on the exterior and the parking area, but you would basically buy your space and have it as is. So it wasn't like they were going to, you know, remodel and, but we wouldn't want them to anyway because we have the space they the way we the want it. The space is state of the, <laughs> the art. The outside is nice now. Yeah. yeah but. So <clears throat> that was kind of breathtaking mm -hmm. because we have such a tiny, concise, well managed budget mm -hmm. that doesn't involve buying properties. But yeah. they made us a very fair offer, but we had two ways we could go. We could do everything we could to make that work or face the fact that we would have to leave because they did not want to be our landlord. They wanted to right. sell this unit, so it was right. either buy it or leave it. But anywhere you go, it. and that would be market rate. Yes. Presumably. No matter what we did, we were going to look at more expense for mm -hmm. housing. Yeah. And as it turned out, long story short, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they made us a very fair offer. Mm -hmm. We got support from the county, from the city of Pacifica, and the city of Half Moon Bay. They, they showed up for us. They helped us make a, a nice down payment. The mortgage is, with the mortgage and the association dues and the extra insurance, easily more than doubled what we used to pay in rent. Wow. So that is something that should have put us underwater, but I think we're actually dog paddling <laughs> our way back to the surface to maybe have a break even year. But this place, wow. you know, we, we use our resources really well, very smart purchases. But if that camera right there breaks, you've got These to have... These are not cheap things. They're not cheap. Yeah. So we've got to have, you know, we've got to be able to pay our bills and put a little bit away for when we need it. So P 
people of the community, <laughs> we still need you to support us. When we're doing a fundraiser, we need you to bid. I'll be your auctioneer. <laughs> and um, and know, some of the things that the auction support. will be things that you made. That's fact, true, yes. <laughs> or that I made up. <laughs> but another important thing is that the community benefits so much from having its own media. And Pacifica is like a jewel. We're not a very big town. We're very, you know, yeah. unusual town in many ways. Yeah. But we have a local newspaper and we have a local TV station. Yeah, in these days when the newspapers are dying everywhere, a lot of uh, communities way bigger than ours don't have a real and, newspaper. And think about it, Ian, if during COVID, this was just a translator station for some big entity that came out of, let's say it came out of Chicago. Would they know how to talk to the businesses here and say, do you need something? Can you do something? Yeah. They couldn't have done what we did because we are part of the community. And that's why it's so important to keep community TV alive and well. Yeah, it's a lot harder these days to keep things focused in the region because so much these days is online, mm -hmm. which is generally not local. You know, I mean, you can you can try to target local areas, but but really, we're generally spend a lot of our time communicating with somebody in every part of the country. You know, mm -hmm. uh, on social media. Well, you want to hear whatnot. something really cool, yeah. um, Marty? We gave a tour to our new. City Council member Christine Bowles. Yeah, she was on here a while ago. Yeah. Yes, and she was a great uh, tour subject. She was really interested in well, taking yeah, everything in. But Marty was saying, do you know when you're outside of the Bay Area and you say Pacifica, do you know what people usually say? Uh, of erosion. No, that, that was my guess. <laughs> Falling off the cliff. Yeah. No, Taco Bell. Oh, Taco Bell, sure. They know about our Taco <clears throat> Bell, and he said, that's not really what we want to be known for. So but it is said, a really good Taco Bell. It is the and world's it has margaritas. best. And I will, I will, yeah. I mean, Folks, I love come to Pacifica and have a margarita world's at the Taco Bell. World's greatest Taco Bell. You can walk uh, up to the surf through window and get what you need yeah. with sandy feet. But there are other things besides yes, Taco but, Bell. Yes, but what I was going to say yeah. is Marty said, we uh, put things out on, you know, PCT has a YouTube channel. Yeah. So even though we, uh, all these meetings and things that we do go on to YouTube as well as in our server where they're very safe, when YouTube gets glitchy and your school board meeting is not going right, well, PCT has your back because we have a copy. But yeah. he put some things out there and he started seeing huge hits. And you know what it was? Rock climbing, mountain biking. Oh, and you yeah. know where the hits were coming from? Europe. From Europe, really? People who were gonna come to the Bay Area and they wanna see San Francisco and they wanna see the cultural part, but the geography here, so the things that we had, and I was like, oh, our hang gliding, you know, off of Muscle Rock. Oh, yeah, Rock. absolutely. That's the so best place for that. So that can bring tourism here, yeah. and that will support, you know, the, the station is very mindfully expanding our footprint to share these really cool things that happen in Pacifica, like Fog Fest and, mm -hmm. and our new thing, Mermaid. We have a new holiday. What, what new holiday? What? Mermaid. Mermay? Yes. I, oh, Mermay. I get Mermaid. you. Mermay. It's a new holiday. It's going to really. happen in May every year. Really? And we just had it, our first one. And um, <laughs> it's the brainchild of Christina Ayola, who has started bringing together our local craftspeople and artists in a thing called Handmade Pacifica. Oh, so awesome. our goal is to get organized so that we can throw events and local people can sell their things, and we can help with tourism, and we can, you know, benefit the community that we live in. So that PCT came, and Rudy, who's here tonight, mm -hmm. interviewed me three times <laughs> during Mermaid, <laughs> and one was live, and Christine Bowles happened to walk up to my table, and I was like, Christine, join me, and she did. That's community television. <laughs> That's great. Well, I know we always had the mermaid part, as a part of the Fog Fest. The posters would always have a mermaid on them. Well, they should. So, because apparently we're a mermaid-based economy here. We are. Yeah. We are. We have <laughs> sirens 
gift shop That's at Rockaway Beach, that, yeah. and that helped me get a house. The fact that my daughter wanted to stop there led me to the real estate agent <laughs> that led me to know that oh, really? same weekend on Sunday where it was an open house. Mm -hmm. We saw our house. They took bids on Wednesday. My window was that big. If I hadn't gone to Sirens and seen that Real and that's why you're office. here right now. And that's why I'm here right now. Because of that serendipitous thing, huh? Serendipity mermaids. Yeah. So, um, and now you are selling your jewelry at Sirens. I am. So it's all coming full circle. Would you like to see a piece? Absolutely. That's, that's, uh, so this was um, mm. one of the mermaid tiaras I created. See if you can get closer you model in on it? that. Oh, you want me to model it? Yeah. yeah. I think I wear it like Jordi LaForge, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually very cool. Yeah. I like uh, that. You get a shot of that eventually. There we are. See? Yeah. You know, and I kind of oh, like this, too. look at how pretty it is on you. You know what? I think uh, I'm going to wear it like you this all what? the time. We Problem need to make is... you one of those. <laughs> I mean, that looks really pretty <laughs> or, or is awesome. it more like Dog the Bounty Hunter? Can you see <laughs> through sure. it? Can you see? You know, the world is very sparkly right now. You're looking through yeah. mer-colored glasses. Here, let me if I just put it on yeah. my head here. It might be. That's the traditional manner, I yes. believe, right? It can be like a headband or oh, it can yeah, be like a tiara. Peace, man. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So that All was right, part so. of Mermaid, was that I created mermaid tiaras, uh -huh. mermaid wands, and little mermaid sculptures so that are now <clears throat> on sale at Siren's Gift Boutique. And so this is all sea glass that you have found yourself? Yes, that's all Pacifica sea glass. This is a, a local... And it's, it's got uh, some bling there. Absolutely. So yeah, Pacifica... Um, we, we have one of the nicer places to find sea glass. We have a so natural the, tumbler. It, it is kind of one of our things, yeah. is sea glass. So yesteryear's from all trash around. is Cheryl's treasure. That's pretty awesome. You know, there's a, you know interesting, I was uh, over at uh, Pedro Point at one point, and there was some kid p getting bottles out of the trash can and throwing them on the rocks. And I'm oh, like, no, no, wait, no. that's not right. And I'm like, and maybe, I think this, that's sea glass seeding. I think it's what they were well, doing. Well, that's not a bad idea. We were talking earlier about, um, before on camera, about oh. Fort Bragg. And I met Captain Cass, who is the sea captain that has the museum of yeah. sea glass, which yeah. blew my mind. Yeah. And he believes in seeding because beaches that have a lot of glass that's like the Pacifica glass, it's rounded and nice, and especially when it gets tiny, uh -huh. it stabilizes a beach. Uh -huh. And what is glass made of? Sand. Yeah, so it's natural, it belongs, it's part of the cycle, the circle of life. Yeah, but don't do this at home, kids. No, no. so but when you <laughs> seed it, you need to tumble it in a tumbler to get the rough, Otherwise, dangerous edges off. Right. But I do actually have a collection of glass that is what we call softened, so mm -hmm. it's not dangerous. And one day I'm gonna go down to Lindemar and <laughs> ask a surfer, I'll have it in a compostable bag, and take it say, out take it out and drop <laughs> it. And then, you know, somebody 50 <clears throat> years from now so, uh, can when, find it. One of the ways of dealing with sea erosion is called uh, beach nourishment, oh. which, is, which basically means dumping sand in there to replace what gets uh, uh -huh. washed away. So this is a very small version of beach nourishment. It is. Doing that. Yeah. It is. And so, so pe people can purchase this at Sirens. Is there other places they can get your, your yes, work at? Yes, I have a BC glass collection at the Royal Bee Yarn Company. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So that's all bee <laughs> that's themed cool. and yarn and knitting themed. So I have oh, okay. like shawl pins so and, and little This is great, we're promoting some local businesses yeah. as well. Yeah, and Lovey's Tea Shop, I have oh, sea cool. tea. So oh. little <laughs> tiny teacups that have sea glass in them. So you can get green tea or brown tea or white tea. Oh, that's cool. And now you, one more thing that you do is you are an author. Yes. Um, and you have a book here you, you'd like to yeah. share with us? Oh. This is your, well, oh, oh, it's more sea the, glass too. Yeah, this yeah. is, this is a, just an example of what can be done with sea glass. Could possibly get okay. in on close on that. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. Okay. If you'd like. Well, I'll but, keep uh, talking while they yeah, figure yeah. out where they're going to see it. But um, it ties in with the book. That's what would made me think to show this now. My book oh. has a Victorian-esque fantasy world, uh -huh. and I realized when I started making jewelry, mm -hmm. when I started making jewelry, that it looked like it came out of my book, because I have this Victorian vibe, kind of steampunk, Okay. Yeah. and yeah. so I realized what I do is I make a costume for sea glass to wear, but when it takes the costume off, it's exactly like it was when I picked it up on the beach, 
Only cleaner. <laughs> I wash it. So this is the costume you've Yeah, I don't put holes in it, and I don't use, I use, if I ever need to glue something, I use E6000, so which doesn't harm it. So this is just being, being it. held in there. That's cool. This is just wired in. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a, like a spider. I weave so, things. So here, then, is the book that that uh, ties into. Yes. Uh, and it is called I, Ivy in the Airship. Did I get that right? Yes. yes. Uh, tell us about this book. Well, in a nutshell, <laughs> <laughs> my work in Dallas as an actress and voice actress led to me being one of the first people to do voices and write for Radio Disney. So a friend of mine said, send your voice demo over to ABC Radio. They're starting a new station. And I went, yeah, well, my stuff is on the radio, but I don't work at the radio. And they said, what if it's Radio Disney? And I said, well, I always wanted to be a Disney voice. So oh, I, boy. I went over That's there. That's a good one. Yeah, I went over there, <laughs> and they were like, oh, Michael Eisner likes your voice. You can be on the morning show with Dean Wendt. <laughs> and you have to come in at 4 a.m. every day, and you'll get off at noon. Well, I had a 5-year-old and a 7-year-old. That wasn't going to work. So mm -hmm. I said, can I do part-time? Just come in and do some cute little voices, and then I'll be out the door. <laughs> and they went, no way. Um, you'll have to write. So I started writing. That led to writing for Barney and Friends for seven years and reconcepting Angelina Ballerina so it didn't get canceled. The UK was done with it. The um, hit entertainment producer for North America said, we need more girl shows. So she said, Cheryl, uh, we want to Pitch them a concept where Angelina goes to a school for the performing arts. So I did that, and it got accepted, and Angelina lived to dance another day. While all this was going on, my family kept hearing me say, oh, I had this great idea for a, a show. But they said, my imagination is kind of expensive. One minute left. So, uh, so yeah. my daughter said, write a book where nobody can tell you no. And I end up with a whole world <laughs> Full of incredible fantasy things, but with a girl that's determined and um, wanting to make a difference. Yeah, so it's almost like a token thing. You have maps and you have I diagrams. Have a you diagram a whole world. Once you get on the airship, don't worry about getting lost because I have floor by floor plans right down to the potato pantry. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, and where can people get your book? It is also for sale at Sirens. Oh, at Sirens. And um, I have a website. Is it at is that Flory's books? It's at Flory's too. Awesome, gosh, yeah. you're reminding me of places I've yeah, got to We've got to promote all the. Oh my gosh, yes, the, please go to Flory's. The city here. And if he runs yeah. out, I'll get him more. Yeah. All right, well, I guess that's all. Thanks we so ran much out. For, for being <laughs> on the show, uh, Cheryl. It's been really helpful uh, to hear about everything, and I really appreciate everything I that you've it. done for PCT. So I loved we'll it. We'll be seeing you about, and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have you on the show again sometime. Anytime you need me. All right, thanks a bunch, Thank Cheryl. Thank you, Ian. All right, great. I want to uh, say thanks to the crew for uh, working uh, pretty much for pizza, and I want to thank uh, Luigi's for providing the pizza for the crew. Remember, folks, this is Wavelength. We're not against them. We're a forum. Mm -hmm.